Chapter 12 The Magic of Laughter If you want to attract people, said the late Sir Thomas Lipton, make them laugh. His own big company, operating hundreds of retail shops, had two big mirrors in every shop, one concave and one convex. What happened? The people going in saw themselves long, thin and hungry looking. When they came out, the mirror showed them short, fat, happy and laughing. Now this was wonderful psychology. Hundreds of people would go into the shops, buy and roar with laughter as they came out. It was a clever idea, a bit mad perhaps, but a good sales stunt. He attracted people by making them laugh. You can do it every time. With Ella Wheeler Wilcox wrote, Laugh and the world laughs with you. Take it from me. She knew what she was saying. People want to laugh, only they are afraid to let their hair down. Have you ever smiled to somebody across the hotel lounge? Somebody you don't know? I guess you haven't. You've grown too far in on yourself. You are in danger of never getting out. You have forgotten what it's like to behave in a free way. Throw off that tight, restricting feeling which stops you tasting some of the fun of being alive. I was larking about the other night and someone said, Do you know we haven't had such fun as this since the war? Isn't that just the saddest thing you have ever heard? In this country it rains a lot. You grumble. You become irritable. Why? Some of the happiest times of my life have been spent in the rain, laughing in the rain. Children do, do not run away from the rain. They paddle in the puddles and laugh. Like a little boy I know, when it was raining hard, beating a tattoo and a caravan roof, he sneaked out of bed in the early morning in his pyjamas and scampered about the wet grass. His father, missing him, discovered what he was up to and said, You naughty boy, coming out in your pyjamas like this when it's raining. The little boy looked at him with a smile and said, Well, I got me at on. They both left. I have heard people coming from a show saying, Oh, I feel ever so much better for that laugh. And it is true, they do feel better. Laughter is a stimulant. Considered cheeriness helps. Consistent cheeriness helps us to keep our chins up. It counterbalances the trying times. What is it that keeps the soldiers going? Although so often he is in the midst of bloodshed, what is it that keeps the sailor from losing his nerve? It is laughter, the cheerful companionship of his pals, to see the funny side of things. I am sure you know the kind of laughter I mean. It is a hearty, Merry, generous sound, love and no more hating, laughter vital enough to move the most bitter man or woman. When I do magic on the stage of television, I don't pull a long face, I smile, I laugh, I am happy. It is a necessary part of magic, this laughter. That itself puts you on a higher plane, helps you to make, uh, helps to make you very magnetic. One of the finest personalities we have today, beloved for his wonderful sense of humour, is the Duke of Edinburgh. At an Edinburgh banquet he used Shaw's naughty adjective from Pygmalion. Members of the Royal George of Surgeons had presented him with a silver bleeding cup to commemorate his visit. Fellows of the college howled with mirth when the President, Mr Walter Mercer, ended his speech. May it please your Royal Highness to accept this bleeding cup. There were great gusts of laughter as the Duke took the cup and said, I can only say it is bloody kind of you. The world need today needs laughter, and how well the Duke of Gavin Edinburgh knows this. You can always be sure of a good laugh when he is around. Magic and gaiety go together. Where you have one, you have the other. When you work magic for yourself, you are gay. When you are gay, you work magic. The two go hand in hand. A little boy made me laugh the other day. He had been taught to say the Lord's Prayer, so my friend encouraged him to go on from there and pray for his parents. So the small boy said, Please God, look after Mummy and Daddy and Uncle Peter. And please God, look after yourself, because if anything happens to you, we're all sunk. During a sale in a department store the other day, I saw a young woman shopping with difficulty. The small daughter at her side tugged and pulled at her mother's skirt. Suddenly the distressed woman said softly, Quick, Mary, just be calm now and take it easy. 
The assistant congratulated her on her psychology. Then smiling at the child, he said, So your name is Mary? Oh no, said the mother, her name is Jill. I'm Mary. They both broke into hearty laughter. She was a real psychologist, that woman, using her affirmations at the right time. Remember Yuri Gagarin, who first conquered space? Everyone fell for him. Yuri had this gallant way of concentrating on you when he is with you, not peeping around for someone more important. But it was his charming smile that got everyone. Lady Halisham loved it, and the women who saw it were overboard for him. Noel Coward has a wonderful sense of humour. He once sent a wire to some people with whom he was going to stay in the country. To make certain the strangers who were to meet him at the station would know him, he wired, shall arrive by the 12.20 train, looking extremely handsome in pale grey. How they must have laughed. Laughter is a right and a duty. The magic of laughter cures, cures all human despair. It brings out the magic in your mind and in the minds of other people. I don't care a damn. This was engraved on the little image of Buddha, which Gabriele de Nunzio always carried on his person. When his superiors denied him and he was forbidden by discipline to make a reply, he would silently exhibit the Buddha and give a little laugh. The thought, I don't care a damn, or I don't give a, a was engraved on the Nunzio's heart as well as his mascot. Here, but not that much. If you read all Europe's most picturesque figures, you will be filled with admiration at the laughing spirit of the splendid men. When somebody wrote, I don't care for the big bad wolf, that somebody made a fortune, because it was a sound laughing philosophy, and people liked it, felt better when they sang it. It is said that Charles I, awaiting the fatal day which was to end his life, asked to have some kittens in his room that he might laugh at their gambles. A sense of humour helps us to be brave, better sports to take it on the chin. Every day you meet a certain number of people, some are with long faces, other with others with a smile that won't come off. You may be sitting in the bus or railway carriage as they pass. You may perhaps never see those people again. They are some who always wear the expression of a graven image. They smile not, neither do they grin. You never give them a second thought. But during the day, even if you are ever so busy, you often recall for a moment a face that smiled at you. I have often wondered why some people fascinate me, and in every case it has been the smile of or the laughter that made the strongest appeal. The sudden uplifting of the corners of a mouth, the beautiful curve of a cheek, the revealing of nice teeth, and then the gradual fading of that smile, the indescribable something which lingers a little while after the smile has gone, like the afterglow of a sunset. That is how I would describe all the smiles that have charmed me. There are the big smiles belonging to a generously proportioned mouth, the baby smiles that belong belonging to the small pouting mouths, the shy smiles, the sad smiles, the mischievous smiles. Are your smiles the winning or losing kind? The winning kind attract and bring magic into your life. One feels instinctively that a lovely smile reveals a lovely soul. It is the outward sign of an inward invisible beauty. It is something which remains in your memory long after the eyes even are forgotten. No one has the strength to stand up against a beautiful smile or a hearty laugh. No one can resist them. The magic is powerful and infectious. Many people smile with their mouths only while their eyes remain quite expressionless. These are mechanical smiles of, of the salad without dressing variety. They are empty. Nothing comes from such a smile. They mean less than nothing. Laughter makes the world go round. Smiles keep the old young, the young healthy, increase the girth of the lean, give to the stout that enviable reputation for good fellowship, keep the doctor away, colour the drab with splashes of gold and silver, reduce the haughty, Elevate the humble, break down the silly barriers of class distinction and level humanity. Show all things in their true perspective and work magic. 
laugh your problems away is the motto of Dr. Murray Banks, a New York psychiatrist and lecturer turned entertainer. Laughter releases us from the restraints, inhibitions and strains of modern living, he says. If you can laugh, you are mentally healthy and the mentally ill can't laugh. He gave up being a doctor to go onto the stage and make people laugh. This doctor realises a great value to health that laughter really is. Laughing gives you a zest for living and helps you to live to a very old age. London Public Health Chiefs recently probing the statistics of deaths from coronary thrombosis and other diseases found increasing evidence that it was the man or woman who refused to worry about keeping up with the Joneses and laughed that escaped these illnesses. I am sure of this myself, said a borough medical officer of health. The man or woman who can laugh and does not give a hoot for anything gets a kick out of life and lives longer. This is supported by public health experts in many other parts of the country, some of whom have been so impressed by their findings that they have reported them to their councils. Dr Hector Mackenzie Wintle, a medical officer in charge of the South Oxfordshire Combined Districts, urges us to stop worrying and laugh. He believes that laughter keeps us fit. I agree, I know it to be true. Ken Roberts, the effervescent comedian, who fills in theatres wherever he appears, knows how to project side-splitting laughter from the moment he comes before the flo- foot- footlights. What makes him so effervescent? Laughter. Life was giving us, given us to enjoy, he says. The secret for me is this, that happiness is a thing called now. Happiness is a thing called now. I feel so strongly about it that I pass it on to others. There is youthful magic in laughter. Laughter is positive. Laugh and you keep a clean, healthy mind. The body reacts at once. Carrying a grudge against people and things is disastrous to health. Most people would like their family doctor to live next door to them so that they could keep calling on him. Laughter can prevent you needing any doctor. The magic of it wins over all your setbacks, enables you to triumph over wrongs and banishes all fears. You need never dread a nervous breakdown if you laugh. How does Ken keep so fit? All those exhausting rehearsals, all that script writing, all that travel, travel, travel. I just laugh and feel happy about it, he says. Laughter lifts any exhaustion. I feel light and gay. Don't you feel lifted up when you laugh? So many people today look sad, tired out and overworked. Yet the fact remains that their laughter can be induced by a comedian. Which is proof their ability to laugh has not died, as some would think. Millions of people are alive today who are not truly living. They are alive because their hearts go on beating, but they are tired and they are sick. They get to get no sheer exhilarating joy out of being alive now. They deny themselves real fun. They do not laugh enough. Good fooling is good medicine. Health must be made every day. That's the point to remember. You should laugh every day, morning, noon and night. Some statistics about babies and the frequency they laugh every day compared to adults. Worth looking up again. What makes Sinbad so rich? You will remember how he related the story of his seven voyages to a poor, discontented porter named Hinbad in order to show him that wealth must be obtained by personal exertion. I like particularly the story of his fifth voyage, when, swimming to a desert island after his ship had been dashed to pieces, he threw stones at the monkeys so they would throw back coconuts to him. That was something more than enterprise in adversity. It was a sense of humour which was Sinbad's salvation in his darkest hour. It made him laugh so heartily it helped him to amass the riches to which he was so justly entitled at the end of the perilous voyage. Laughter saved him, and it was laughter that attracted the riches. It is easy to talk with a smile. You can convey any message by the way you look, smile or laugh. It is the most international language of all. Without any words, 
you can use hand gestures and a smile to make yourself understood but without the smile you are completely stuck nobody will take notice of you nobody will be attracted in a past chapter i suggested you carry in your pocket a playing card the king or queen of hearts i now suggest in all earnestness earnestness that you slipped into your pocket or handbag the jester or joker as a constant reminder to you to laugh it is not work that breaks you down neither is it the problem that you have to solve it is the wrong attitude of mind and when you are determined not to smile or laugh you have the wrong attitude if you are never going to laugh at your troubles then you need read no further how often do you go into musical comedy or variety show there is always a good comedian paid big money to make you laugh it is much easier to move people to tears than to win them over to laughter but they do it what sort of men are they off stage they are amongst the most serious of men. Those who remember the late George Roby will remember that he was the creator of beautiful music, making violins and a lover of beautiful china, of which he had a marvellous collection. To know him was to add to one's education in artistry. Charlie Chaplin has a tremendous interest in vegetarianism. Danny Kay does untold good work for millions of children all over the world. I could go on naming an endless number of them, all deeply thoughtful. These men who make us laugh are real thinkers. They more they make you laugh. The more you laugh, the more you raise yourself up to that plane where magic comes, to higher vibrations of thought, higher dimensions of reality. Comedians work magic through sheer laughter. They never lack friends. If you want magic in your life, you must smile. You must laugh. Use this tremendous pivot power that makes you a force that can hold sway, destruct or construct. It is said that anybody can play the fool well, but you, you know why you are laughing, because I have been telling you, know that it brings the magic out of your mind. Magical things will happen all around you. Play the fool well, Laughter comes before all. For lack of it, many a man goes down and stays down. Thousands of people are going down because they cannot bring themselves to laugh. To be out of touch with the young is to be out of touch with laughter. Today the world is for the young. You must mix with them. To be out of touch with young people is to be out of touch with laughter and magic. Why deny yourself healthy, fun and exhilarating joy? Why be crabby, miserable and complaining? It doesn't get you anywhere, but laughter does. Laughter gets you health and wealth and attracts the things you want in life. Mix with people who laugh and go to the theatre where a comedian tops the bill. Write and tell them how they made you laugh. Get a laughing signed photograph and keep it somewhere prominent to remind you of what I am saying, to inspire you to do the same. Go backstage and meet the comedians and laugh together all over again. Touch their lives with your own, share their fun, their hopes, their dreams. Invite them to your home, take them for a drive out into the country in your car, drink with them. Do not cut yourself off from the magic of laughter, but go all out to experience the thrill that comes when you share laughter, if only for a moment. How much are you a part of other laughing lives? You must strive to be, for laughter is catching. Did you see the royal variety of performers at theatre or on the television? The show where wonderful and ageless Morris Chevalier appeared. The radiant Queen Mother will always remember his smile and the charming way he looked up at her as she sat so glamorous glitting with diamonds in the box. She is never likely to forget the endearing way he smiled and sang You must have been a beautiful baby because baby look at you now. Her sweet smile of appreciation captured all the hearts. Those, who were, those were the two loveliest smiles one is ever likely to see. It was Stern who said, every time a man smiles, much more when he laughs, it adds something to his fragment of life. And that something is magic. Do I make people laugh? Here is an extract, extract from the Times of Malta. 
Koran Al Koran gave a miniature preview to the press at the Hotel Astra last night. This is only a sideline, he explained, as he took out a pack of playing cards. Three men each took a card. There was no possibility of Koran seeing the cards, and yet he knew what suit and denomination they were. Another demonstration of mind reading was given when he asked the press representative to think of any number between 1 and 99. Write it on a piece of paper, out of sight of Al and the bystanders. In a few seconds, Al Koran drew the number. It was 17. These things made people laugh. They couldn't understand it. They were spellbound. All they could do was laugh and congratulate me.